Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. So when you're saying, what what was your opening uh, hook to basically, here's who I am, here's what we have, interested or not? Yeah, what was the script? Wow. Yeah. I mean, we I I learned how to cold call on Cisco systems. So it was my first people are, gonna have, pe- people are gonna have to that start business that are not aware of this. You gotta sell. You're gonna start yeah. a business. Yeah. You yeah. gotta sell. You gotta or sell. If you hit a plateau or if you're introducing a new product that's in a little bit different groove. Uh, our niche than you've been, you're going to get off your your butt and you, you know, sell, you got a prospect, you know, yep. everybody's yep. got a prospect. And yep. so that's why I spend a little time on this. Yeah, no, of course. So we, we would, um, the way I would start it, it, and, and I wouldn't do it this way today if I started over, but I would just, you know, smile and dial. I would pick up the phone. I dial a number. If somebody connected, you know, hi, my name is Jonathan Dio. I'm with Dean Witter. You know, we're an investment firm. We've got an office downtown San Francisco. Um, we've got some good research that suggests that Cisco Systems is a good buy at this price. Do you invest in yeah. stocks? Yeah, I invest in stocks. Well, great. Do you have a second? Can I tell you about Cisco Systems? I own some Cisco Systems. Great. Well, then I have, you know, two different stocks I could talk about that are good diversifiers for Cisco Systems. Oh, I don't own, I don't own uh, uh, Cisco Systems. Oh, great. Let me tell you about Cisco Systems. Or, you know what? I don't own stocks. Well, let me tell you about this municipal bond we're offering. So you'd have a, you know, you just have a list of things. Yeah. You didn't care. Like you didn't yeah. care if somebody bought or didn't buy. Right. You wanted a connection, someone you could call back with the next idea. And if you've seen the movie, what is the movie with? Um, uh, uh, oh my God! What Wall Street movie? Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, the, the, the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, Wolf or, of Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, that is so. The stuff they talk about is is actually how you're trained. Like you have to have the yeah. backups. You have to do this. You're very, you know, uh, it's 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 very interesting process. But today you, you still got to reach out people. You want to make connections. And so you have to make just, connections. You got to make the connect. You got to meet people. You got to talk to people. You got to get them to talk to you. You got to get them to respond. So back in the day, it was phone. Um, today, it would be networking. It would be going to the Rotary Club. It'd be going to, and that's kind of how, you know, the second iteration of the business, when I finally did start my own company, that's how I built it. It's just by building relationships in my local community. Um, and I have, a. it was a, it was a pretty good size, medium sized practice by the time I merged it, but it was still very local. We're eighty five percent Oakland, Berkeley, California. I mean, very local. Yeah, it's amazing. Also today, the ex- the explosion in uh, entrepreneur type groups uh, mm. in these different areas, where they'll get in. You know, new budding entrepreneurs will get in and share ideas and network. You know, it's a little more more specific. Like they have, you know, like the mastermind type. Things, but if you if you get out and you check, you can find there's probably a lot of those going on in your area, oh, yeah. and it goes back to what proverb says: if you want friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and you got to yeah. go in with you got to go in with a uh, smile on your face. You know, if you're 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 a happy guy, put a smile on your face because other than that, people don't know. You know, right, right. and. and- it, so this and this is the core. This is the, the the lesson I learned from five years at the at the bigger firms is I didn't get referrals. Like it was all cold call. Is cold call, cold call. Is hammer out right. every day. Cold call, cold call, cold call. But if you network and you treat people right, you get referrals. And that whether it's a, whether you're a painting contractor or a carpet cleaner or a wall or you know wealth advisor, it's the referrals that you want. It is it is happy clients. So how do you make happy clients? Well, you treat them like kings and queens. You take care of them. You make sure that you're honest. You make sure you follow up. You make sure you do what you say. And if you do those things, you, and you do the up. extra, you do some extras, you know, surprise. Yo, totally. Yeah. Yep. And the thing is like this, and this, since we're on this, we might as well nail this down. The reason to cold call is to get yourself into referrals. You know, that's the way the smart people move. You know, they're like, I got to brutalize myself for a period of time to yeah. where I can build up a client base, a friend base or whatever that know me, feel good about me to where I can get referrals. And once you get into referrals, your percentages go up because yep. it's it's warm, not cold. And yep. uh, uh, so let's talk about now you started 
your firm? And was that, uh, what's the nastiest thing that happened to you before you started your firm? You're in your, your, your time up the lot, kind up there, the most, you know, the, the one that got you to the bone, you know, or, you know, you come up where you like, oh, this is a different world. This is not grad school anymore. And, uh, you know, every everything that people say to me is not necessarily, I can't necessarily take that at face value. You know, people, they say they're going to do that. The company says they're going to do this for me or whatever. You know, you've already mentioned one of them where the company, you know, they wouldn't, uh, uh, they had all, you, you found out the under the ugly underbelly and they weren't going to change, you know, but what, uh, what were things that, was there anything that shook you early on that forced you to like, I better get real now. I'm not in school. I'm not a professor. And this is the thing now that I want to bring out, Jonathan, why I'm such a maniac with the people that work with me on these calls about getting people who have done real things, because this is the stuff that makes entrepreneurs you know they get hit in the face they go through that thing and professors don't do it you know employees don't do it if you're an employee i don't care if you're ceo you are an employee yep and uh you know you face the challenges that but it's not like you know it's all going to come tumbling now you know you're going to come down as a ceo and walk away with your hundred million dollar in options and this, that, and the other that you've been salting away for the last five years, uh, or pardon me, $500 million in options now in this economy. And so an employee, I mean, a CEO, anybody who works for a corporation is not an entrepreneur. And so they can tell you a limited type thing, but going through this, the guy who starts the business and goes through that thing, you, you learn that stuff, but you get a lot of exposure early on because you're on commission. Right. You know, when you're you work in there, you're on commission. And so that's what's different as you were working in there rather than being on salary. So it, did you go through any of that? Any of that? I saw a little flash in your eye like you, 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 something came back to you. Yeah, there's two, there's two stories of like, you, can, you can't believe, you can't even, you can't believe it. One of them I already mentioned, and that's the, that's the overpriced, you know, the, 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 you are actually charging 1.2%, but um, we're telling clients we're charging one percent. Like that, that actually happened at a Wall Street firm, um, and and we tried to report on it, and everyone everyone lined up to defend it. And I was just like, ah, this is I can't I can't deal with that. But the big one, this was the first year, maybe it's my second year in the business, um, and I kind of alluded to this, but there was a darling of the firm, and he he had uh, he had come to the firm from one of the local banks, and when he came to the firm from the local bank, he brought with him a, a CD and the CD, uh, like a disc. You remember the discs you used to put in the computer, yeah. that, that disc that had data on it. And the data had on it, uh, the data it had on it was all of the CDs that were maturing at the bank that he left. Oh. Uh, so, so that's, I know that, so this is, I knew that this is what he used to build his business. So I knew that he had sort of illegal data to help him build his business. And as a trainee, I was, I went in with him and I listened to him. I cold called for him. Um, and I listened to him sell when he had a meeting. So he was like a training person for us. But then you fast forward like six, eight months and I'm, you know, I'm working Monday through Saturday and a half day on Sunday, right? You, you work, yeah. we work 90 hour weeks. It was ridiculous right. how much you work. Um, but I'm in on a Saturday and there's like five of us to come into the office on a Saturday and it's busy. It is crazy busy and they're shredding papers. And we're like, what the hell is going on? Um, and I, you know, you got to just kind of ask some questions. You, you, you peek under the hood, you try to figure out what's going on. Turned out that um, a lot of the investment recommendations that had been made by this guy uh, were not, were, you couldn't back up the recommendation with the paperwork that was signed. So they were, they were altering the paperwork after the fact. Uh, right. So, you, you, movies are made of this stuff, right? Um, so it's it's kind of it was kind of sick. That was the first indication, and I left that firm like six months within six months of that little activity, trying to find a new new place to go. But what right. I discovered after five of them, they're all the same, or at least they yeah. were five years ago. They're all the same. And no offense, folks, but when you turn these things into the regulatory environment, they don't want to see it. You know, they don't want to bring this stuff up. 
And it's usually, you know, if you're going to be a whistleblower, you're going down. You know, show me of a place in any industry where the whistleblower, it turns into, they build a statue for him in the lobby. Yeah, no, no, doesn't happen. No. And so, uh, you know, it's great to be a whistleblower. Somebody's got to do it. Try and find a way to do it anonymously <laughs> and get out of there. Get yourself another job or get your own company uh, like Jonathan uh, did. And so one choice you said is I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to try and reinvent the industry. I've been to five companies. This is the way it is. Be a waste of time to go to the regulatory people. It would only hold them back for a little bit, you know, you know, this podcast, I can say what I want. It's kind of like making the Bidens, you know, stop taking corrupt funds. You know, it's like, yeah, you might stop the next million dollar payment, but you know, anyway, any, just kidding. We all love the Bidens. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a certain, you know, you know how the river is roaring down the Amazon river. It roars in a certain direction and you, you are smart enough to realize one person can only do so much yep. and you try and do what you can. If you're in a position where you can disrupt the world, go ahead, try and do it anonymously though, as much as possible. So you don't get the vengeance down on your head from, cause there's a lot of people, what we found, there was, there was one thing in our company where we found out that they were accepting a uh, processing during like Hurricane, this hurricane went through South Carolina and it just went right up through and destroyed South Carolina. And after that, there was a boom in business in the life insurance side. And there was like 14 Marilyn Monroe's at one address on Mockingbird Lane. She bought hundreds of thousands of dollars of insurance. And Clark Gable, he bought a ton of stuff. And there's all of this business turned out, you know, uh, it was like, what the crap is, when they finally, the persistency thing came crashing down because it's funny that those Marilyn Monroe's defaulted on their payments, you know, because they were fantasy anyway. And so eventually all of this started to unravel and the, the guys who were in charge, they lied through the, lied under oath about the things they said, we talked, we did this, we'd never allow that. And it's like, well, I couldn't believe yep. the lies that people will do. So anyway, you do the smart thing, started your, to pr protect themselves. And it'd be your best friend will lie against you in that situation to save their butt, you know? Yep. So you have to look out for yourself. And uh, you did that, you found that. And we spent a lot of time on that because you're a hardworking guy. Yeah. You know, you were working and you were doing well, I I, I imagine. Yep. But that's no, not good enough, folks. It's not good enough. You've got to have the right environment because eventually it will bring you down. Yeah, I, Go ahead. I, I, I often wonder what would have what would my what would the size of my business be had I just put my head, ignored all the crap and put my head down and just kept going forward. Like I just had momentum, just kept going forward, kept learning how to do the business better and ignored the environment. And I and I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure I would have. You know, I ended with like 350 million before I merged. I'm sure I would be at a billion dollar, you know, thing if I just because yeah. I moved five, I moved a whole bunch of times. And every time you move, you got to repaper accounts, you got to bring right. clients with you. You got to it's every time it's a it's a do-over. You got to learn new systems, you got to learn, you know, what 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 does this company offer? You got all that stuff is brand new. So starting over five times, but it's it's the right thing to do. Uh, and yeah. at the end of the day, my clients are better off, my family's better off, and I am proud of what I do. I'm happy. Yeah. And so how talk about launching your your company. Uh how, what what was that all about? And what what was what went well, what didn't go well? Cuz you had some pretty good assumptions about how to do this thing now. <laughs> yeah. It's I, I like how you called it a company. It wasn't really yeah. a company at that yeah. point. It was it well, was me in a basement. It was really It was an was. idea. <laughs> it was a concept at best. Yeah. Uh you know what I what I joined was I joined I joined the um, Berkeley Chamber of Commerce. My I was like, Dad, you know, I don't I know how to cold call, um, but I don't know how to run a business. I I got a computer, I got a laptop computer. Uh, I plugged it in at my house. I joined the Berkeley Chamber of Commerce. I actually hired a guy to cold call for me, and we cold call with each other, right? Just we had yeah. a little bit of. We ended up not doing the work and talking about other stuff. Um, right. He was a genius. <laughs> <laughs> he he was literally a genius. Like he's founded a couple companies now. I'm an investor in one of his companies. I'm really excited about that. Um, but 
we talked and we just shoot the shit. We wouldn't really get uh, a lot of cold calling done, but it was through the networking at that point and, and talking to people and treating them well. And um, I found this group called uh, uh, BNI, Business Networking International. Um, I, there were no chapters available in my area. So I started a new chapter and you know gathered 15 other business people in 15 different professions. And we started a chapter and we met every single week and we, you know, we all pooled our networks together. And, you know, I know somebody that does cleans pools. Do you? Oh, shit, you need this person? Great. Let me introduce you to this person. I know someone that does insurance. Here, you want some insurance? Great. I know a realtor. Here's a realtor, right? So you, you just introduce people across with these small business people. And I, I got, you know, my first five years from zero to probably 75 clients just by networking and working with that. And that's when that's when things kicked off. I mean, that's when really you started getting momentum, started getting referrals. Those referrals started to be to more complex cases, you know. Um, and by the way, wealth grows. So if you have it and it grows, uh, it grows revenues. So the, these clients got bigger. They inherited, they retired and rolled over in an IRA, rolled over a 401k into an IRA. They, so it's just you treat people well, they stay. You treat people well, they introduce new people, and that's that for me. That's what that's what made it work. Did every single client stay with you? I have I have lost more. Uh, clients to death than I've lost to leaving. I have I have lost probably uh, I can count them on one hand how many clients I've lost in my career who've gone who've gone someplace else. Like, yeah, that, that has happened. One guy, oh my god, it killed me. He was a client for eleven years. Um, his name was Larry. I I love Larry. Larry and I had lunch together. He was a great guy, um, but he was you know he was sensitive to the fees that that advisors charge, right. which is smart. I get it. Right, we're not cheap. Um, and his wasn't a very complex case, but we, I, we, we were friends. It was so, and then he said, you know, Jonathan, I'm really sorry. Ah, I just, I just can't, I can't justify the fee anymore. I'm like, all right, I get it. You know, I love you. You have a, you know, have a great, have a great life. Let's, let's go to lunch some other time. But I, that was the only one that really stung when that one, yeah. when that one left, but it happens. Like it's, it's gotta happen. Thanks for listening to the million dollar mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five-star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whiteallonwinning.com. Thanks for listening.